In this video, I want to provide an introduction to the law of iterated expectations when it's in its nested form. And by its nested form, I mean it's written like I've already written it here. So mathematically, it means that the expected value of y given x is equal to the expectation of the expected value of y given z and x when I condition on x. OK, so that's just it mathematically, but what does that actually mean? So the idea here is that we might be interested in evaluating the average level of something within a population. So what we might be interested in is the level of IQ within a population. And what we might do is we might break that population up into males and females. So a particular conditional expectation we might be interested in might be what's the average level of IQ given that an individual is female. In other words, what's the average level of IQ in the female subpopulation? And we could evaluate this quite easily. All we would do is we would sum over all the different values of IQ within that subpopulation, and it would be a weighted sum of that particular value of IQ times the proportion of the subpopulation, so it's the proportion which have IQ equal to that specific value of IQ given that they are within the female population. So this is just a weighted sum where we're weighting by the proportion of the subpopulation which has that particular value of IQ. Another way we could work out the average level of IQ within the female population would be to break up the female population into two or more subsamples. So the idea is that this whole sort of shape here represents the female population. And what we could do is we could break up the female population into, let's say, those that smoke and those that don't smoke. And then intuitively, if we can work out the average level of IQ in the female population for those that smoke, so that's the expected value of IQ, given that an individual smokes and that they're female, and if we could work out the expected value of IQ given that an individual doesn't smoke and also given that they're female, then, or in other words, if we could work out the averages of these two subpopulations, then if we multiply those two subpopulations by the relative proportions and add them together, that should then give us the overall average level of IQ within the female population, right? And let's check that the law of iterated expectations in its nested form actually gives us this intuitive result. So the idea is here we're trying to evaluate the expected value of IQ given that an individual is female. In other words, what's the average level of IQ within the female population? And what the law of iterated expectations tells us is that this is the same as taking the average of each of these subgroups, or across each of these subgroups. So what we're doing here is we're summing over all the different cases for smoking, and there are just two here, an individual smokes or they don't. And it's that times, well, we're summing over rather, the probability that smoking takes on that particular value, so an individual either smokes or they don't, given that individual is in the female population, and it's this whole thing times the expected value of an individual's IQ, given their particular type of, um, which subgroup they're in, so whether they smoke or not, and also given that they're in the female population. So there are just going to be two cases to sum over here, the case where an individual smokes and if they don't smoke. So what we get is we get, first of all, the probability that smoking is equal to S, in other words, an individual smokes, given that they are female, times the expected value of IQ, given that that individual smokes and given that they're female, given that they're female rather, plus the probability that an individual doesn't smoke, so that's, they're in the bottom group here, given that they are female, times the expected value of IQ, given that they don't smoke, and also given that they are female. So this has given us our rather sort of intuitive result, which we expected from the beginning, right? Essentially what we can do is we can work out the average level of IQ in the two subpopulations, the first one here represents those that smoke, the second one here represents those that don't smoke. And then if we multiply these two averages by their relative proportions and add them together, that will then give us an overall average level of IQ within the female population. 